Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so everyone give him a warm welcome. Number 10. The Christ Myth The Christ Myth theory states that Jesus Christ was nothing but a myth. Earl Doherty, a Canadian author and historian, was one of the biggest believers in the theory. He claimed Jesus never existed, and if he did, he had almost nothing to do with the founding of Christianity. It's a myth that's been perpetrated in modern times, and many believe that the Vatican has proof of it. One of the biggest issues with the theory comes down to the Gospels. Contemporary scholars believe the Gospels can be considered ancient biographies, meaning they tell real stories involving real people. On the other hand, there are a lot of other scholars who believe the Gospels cannot be considered historical narratives. These were stories written by people thousands of years ago who manufactured a virgin-born hero to be their messiah. When you look at the foundation of the Bible, it reads like any other fictional story. The hero comes by a miraculous conception, he goes on to fight the forces of evil, dies at the climax, then is resurrected after death to be victorious. In the end, there's no way anyone can say for certain if Jesus Christ was a real person. That is, nobody except the Vatican, who supposedly have documents in their archives that prove Christ was manufactured. Number 9. Editing the Bible In 1684, the Vatican removed 14 books from the Bible and gave no explanation for their reasoning. When the Bible was originally published in English in 1611, it contained 80 books, but the Bible in circulation today only has 66. The books that were removed by the Vatican are now called the Apocrypha, or the hidden books of the Bible. They were included in the Old Testament and consist of famous works such as the History of Susanna, the Prayer for Manassas, the Books of Maccabees, and the Wisdom of Solomon. Yet in 1684, a group at the Vatican decided these books didn't fit in with their system of beliefs, and they were cut. According to religious scholars, the 14 books were removed from the Bible because they were either of unknown authorship or had a doubtful origin. The books were viewed more as fiction than fact, and so they were cut from the Bible entirely. Interestingly, there's a whole different group of books that are even beyond the Apocrypha. These are considered forbidden books and more fantasy than gospel. These highly controversial texts include everything from the Testament of Judah to the book of Adam and Eve, and if you ask the Vatican, none of them are legitimate. Number 8. Women Priests According to some, the recently restored catacombs of Priscilla in Rome have provided undeniable proof of an early sect of female priests at the beginning days of Christianity. For five long years, restoration work was done in the catacombs, with workers hurrying to get them reopened to the public. The catacombs were initially built starting in the 2nd century AD, and they go on for several miles underneath Rome. Not only do the catacombs hold ancient corpses, but they are also decorated in beautiful frescoes. One of the rooms in the catacombs holds a fresco titled Cubiculum of the Veiled Woman. It depicts a scene of a woman with her arms outstretched, just like what you might see with a priest while saying Mass. She's also seen wearing the vestments of a traditional Christian priest. In another room, known as the Greek Chapel, there is yet another fresco showing a group of women sitting around a table, looking like they're celebrating Mass. Some experts have argued that these ancient frescoes prove that roughly 2,000 years ago, there were female priests. However, somewhere along the lines, the Vatican erased all evidence of that. In contrast to this theory, Barbara Mazel from the Pontifical Commission on Sacred Archaeology claims it's just a fantasy. Barbara works directly for the Vatican and says the frescoes aren't proof of anything and she says the theory of female priests has no foundation in reality. The Church chooses to uphold the idea that women cannot become priests because Jesus only had male apostles, even though there's speculation that Mary Magdalene had been one of his apostles too. Number 7. Mary Queen of Scots One of the most famous documents hiding in the Vatican secret archives is a letter written in French from November 23, 1586. It's a fragile piece of parchment bearing the royal insignia of Mary Queen of Scots. The letter was written by Mary herself and addressed to the Pope begging for her life. And although the letter failed to save Mary from meeting the executioner's sword, the document has survived for over 400 years in the bowels of the Vatican. It's one of the most historically significant confidential documents ever, 
and it was only recently put on display in Rome for the world to see. Mary wrote the letter from her prison cell after she had been locked up at Fotheringhay Castle in Northamptonshire. In the letter, Mary asked the Pope to be forgiven of her sins while also warning him about potentially treacherous cardinals. She claimed that the tribunal responsible for condemning her to death was illegitimate, and she went on to detail her suffering from the previous 20 years of her imprisonment. Mary was initially incarcerated following an unsuccessful attempt to regain her Scottish throne. She asked Queen Elizabeth of England for protection, but was instead imprisoned and tried for treason. Mary's last hope at salvation was the Pope, but he ignored her pleas. Mary was executed at 8 a.m. on February 8, 1587. Number 6. Henry VIII's Divorce Papers in the Vatican secret archives, there is a letter written by King Henry VIII of England to Pope Clement VII in the year 1530. Henry desperately wanted a divorce from Catherine of Aragon so he could marry Anne Boleyn. In the early 16th century, England was still considered Roman Catholic. However, King Henry and his desire for a woman who wasn't his wife would lead to a religious reformation in England that changed the rest of English history. After this letter was delivered and the Pope denied the King's request, King Henry broke all official ties with Rome. He established the Church of England instead, and eventually England became a Protestant nation. It was the first real division in the Church, and the Protestants and Catholics have been fighting ever since. Shockingly, all the turmoil that came about between the two religions was because of this one letter that was lost in a Vatican drawer until the 1920s. Do you believe that Jesus Christ could really just be a fictional character? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 5. Michelangelo's Blackmail The Vatican kept a very strange theft secret for nearly 20 years, and in 2015 they received a ransom request for 100,000 euros. 97,450 US dollars. Somebody had apparently stolen a pair of documents from the famous Renaissance artist Michelangelo. One of the items was a letter written in Michelangelo's own handwriting, something extremely rare and worth a small fortune. The letter could be the only preserved specimen like it. The other stolen item is a document that bears only Michelangelo's signature. The ransom was sent to the Cardinal at St. Peter's Basilica, and according to a Vatican spokesman, it was immediately refused. The Vatican does not deal with blackmail. Oddly enough, the documents had already been missing since 1997. Somebody managed to take these extraordinary historical relics from the Vatican's archives without anyone noticing. However, the Vatican never announced the theft up until they received the ransom request 20 years later. As far as we know, the letters are still missing to this day. Number 4. The First Pope's Bones According to the Bible, Saint Peter was one of the most important, if not the most important, of Jesus Christ's twelve apostles. He is recognized as the first pope in Christian history. He was the first man to receive the keys to the gates of heaven, and he was killed by crucifixion at Vatican Hill 2,000 years ago, condemned by Emperor Nero. St. Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy enough to die in the same manner as the Messiah. Based on all the historical facts we have, St. Peter was a very real person. The St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City was built in the 16th and 17th centuries and is the most recognized basilica in the entire world. It's also believed to be the final resting place of St. Peter's bones. It's the largest church in the world by interior measurements and the holiest Christian shrine anywhere. And yet there are some researchers who don't believe St. Peter's bones are there at all, and they think the Vatican is lying about it. Liberato Di Caro from the National Research Council of Italy is currently searching for the true location of St. Peter's body. He and other researchers claim that based on what we know about history in the 4th century AD, when the first basilica was built on Vatican Hill, there's no way it was constructed in St. Peter's honor. It was Emperor Constantine who built the old St. Peter's Basilica. However, due to the rampant Christian persecution at the time, the researchers believe St. Peter's remains would have been dug up and transported elsewhere. They say St. Peter is really buried underneath the mausoleum of St. Helena. The exact details are vague and a little confusing. It's important to note that in 1968, the bones of an old man were found in St. Peter's Basilica. 
The Vatican, headed by Pope Paul VI, immediately announced them to be the remains of St. Peter. Liberato, De Caro, and other scholars like him believe this was a blatant lie, and that St. Peter is really buried somewhere else entirely. Number 3. The Crucifixion Plot There is a wild rumor that somewhere in the Vatican's secret archives, proof of an immense cover-up is hiding. This document would flip everything we know about Jesus Christ and the Church on its head. If it does exist, it's likely locked in a vault and buried 40 feet, 12 meters underground. The supposed document allegedly contains the truth of what happened when Jesus was crucified. The theory is that Jesus never died on the cross, but that a group of conspirators faked his death and subsequent resurrection so that he would become the figurehead the early church needed to gain power. The deal was supposedly made with Pontius Pilate, the legendary Roman who ordered Jesus to be killed. It's believed that Pilate made a deal to save Jesus' life, and the prophet was in on it the whole time. In the Gospels, we hear how Jesus called out for something to drink while he was hanging on the cross. A sponge soaked in vinegar was then lifted up to his mouth, but after he drank the liquid, he died. The theory says that instead of vinegar, it was anesthetic soaked into the sponge, and Jesus was knocked out cold. He was then removed from the cross because the people thought he was dead, but really, he was just passed out. If this really happened and the Vatican is covering it up, it would be proof that Jesus Christ was nothing but a trickster who faked his death. Number 2. Galileo's Court Transcript It was on April 12, 1633, that Galileo Galilei was accused of heresy. The chief inquisitor for Pope Urban VIII, Father Vincenzo Magalani da Firenzola, began the investigation into the famous astronomer for his heretical science. Galileo was officially ordered to hand himself over to Vatican officials and stand trial. His charge of heresy stemmed from the fact that he was publicly announcing that the Earth revolves around the Sun. The Catholic Church deemed this blasphemous because, according to them, the Sun revolved around the Earth. The Earth was considered the immovable center of the universe and all things, as they interpreted it in the scriptures. Standard practice at the time meant that Galileo needed to be held in a cell while he awaited his verdict. Interestingly, 1633 was the second time Galileo had gotten in trouble by the church. In 1616, he was officially forbidden from holding beliefs about the earth and the sun. He wasn't only forbidden from teaching his beliefs, he wasn't even allowed to have them. When he was interrogated that year, he denied believing the Earth revolves around the Sun, and instead claimed that he only discussed the possibility for fun. This was his way around being hanged for his scientific beliefs. However, his excuse didn't work this time. He was found guilty of having believed that the Sun is the center of the world, and that it does not move from east to west. He was ordered to be imprisoned and spent the rest of his life under house arrest. He was also forced to recite the seven penitential psalms once a week for three years. One of the most fascinating things in the Vatican archives is the physical transcript of the 17th century trial. The ancient document bears the signature of Galileo, making it wildly valuable. Sadly, the transcript was held secret in the Vatican for centuries, and they only admitted to being wrong about Galileo and the position of the Earth and the universe in 1992. Number 1. The Shinon Parchment Hidden in the Vatican secret archives, there is a document that is 700 years old. This particular document is one of the most important in all of the Church. It's an old secret transcript pertaining to the trial of the Knights Templar. The document shows that Pope Clement V had initially observed the medieval order of heresy after they were arrested and tortured in 1307. During that time, King Philip IV of France had the Knights Templar arrested, brought up on charges of heresy and immorality, and then had them executed. The military order of the Poor Knights of Christ, as they had originally been called, was founded nearly 200 years prior, in 1118, in Jerusalem. However, as they became a strong and influential organization, the French king began to fear them. Not wanting his power to be put to the test, the king hatched a plan to rid himself of the Templars and steal their wealth. This document, called the Chinon Parchment, was written in 1308 by Pope Clement. He admitted that he had originally absolved the Knights Templar of any wrongdoing, but said he was pressured by the king to get rid of them, and so he found them guilty of immorality. The document never became public, 
and in 1312 the Pope became pressured again by the King and suppressed the information. The paper was only recently discovered due to an alleged filing error. What else do you think could be hiding down in the Vatican's secret archives? Let us know in the comments and be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.